So let's talk about this idea of 50%. This symbol, you might have to practice writing it a few times. You kind of make a little circle and you come down and you draw another circle. This means 50%. What it literally means is 50 as compared to 100. Doesn't that sound familiar? We've been talking about ratios. So now we learn percentages because they're just a type of ratio. Percent means per 100, all right? So we write percent like this. If I say, give me 50% of your money, I tell you this. If I say, the price of the, uh, of the watermelon is 50% off, I write it like this. That means half off. If I say it's gonna rain with a 50% chance, this is how I write it. But there are other ways to write percentages, right? What does a percent actually mean? 50% actually means that it's 50 as it compares to 100. Because remember, percent, this symbol means per 100. So 50 per is the line and 100 is down here. So this symbol means per 100. So this thing means exactly the same thing as 50 divided by or fraction bar 100. So let's talk about what would happen if we actually did this division, 50 divided by 100. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna divide it for you the first time and then I'm gonna show you the simpler way to do it. Let's take 50 and let's actually divide it by 100 because this is what it is. It's a division or our fractions are all division, right? So notice you have a 50, you have an invisible decimal point here at the end. Um, and so we're gonna say, how many times can 100 go into 50? It can't. So we're gonna drop a zero at the end. How many times? can, and don't forget your decimal is gonna float right above there. How many times can 100 go into 500? So 100 times something is 500. There has to be a five here. And when you multiply, you'll get 500 and you'll subtract, you get a zero. So we can basically stop because uh, we've got a remainder of zero. What we figured out is if we take 50 and we divide it by 100, the answer is 0.5, which is another way of writing 0.5. Five. So what we're trying to show you is that there's different ways to represent percentages. Every percent can be converted to a decimal. And the way you convert it is you take the 50 and you just divide it by 100 because that's what percent means. And when we do this division, we figure out that the decimal equivalent of this thing is 0 0.5. So this is another way of writing 50%, 0 0.5. All right, now let's take a look at this fraction one more time. What if we don't do the division and actually get the decimal? What if we come down here and we say 50 over 100 as a fraction? I can simplify that fraction, right? Because 50 on the top and 50 on the bottom, I can simplify it. I can divide the top by 50 and the bottom also by 50. And what will I actually get? 50 divided by 50 is one and 100 divided by 50 is what, two? So I get an answer of one half. So up here, I will also say that this is also equal to one half. So putting it all together, what we have figured out is that this uh, percentage, which is 50%, can be also written as the fraction one half, right? And then you can also write it as a decimal 0 0.5. And all three of these are the same way of saying the same thing. It's important for you to know that every single percentage can be converted to a fraction, which can also be converted to a decimal. And these all mean the same thing. In the past, we have learned about fractions and you can convert them to decimals. We learned that. Now you're learning that you can also represent all of these as a, a, a fraction. So if I tell you it's gonna rain tomorrow with a 50% chance, that's the same thing as telling you that half the time it's gonna rain and half the time it's not, which is another way of saying 0.5, if you think of a scale of zero to one, then 0.5 is right in the middle. So whereas this is on a scale of zero to 100, 50% is right in the middle, this is a scale of zero to one, 0.5. So the 0.5 is, means the same thing as 50%, and the one half means the same thing as well. Now the last thing I'm gonna tell you before we move on to the other problem is we took 50 and we actually divided it by 100. And I did the long division to show you, but I want to remind you that when you divide any number by 10 or 100, there's a much simpler way to do it. All you do is you remember that this 50 always has an invisible decimal point at the end, all numbers do. And when I divide just by 10, I move the decimal one spot to the left and when I divide by 100, I move the decimal two spots to the left, so 0 0.5, right? Or 0 0.50, it's the same thing, you put a zero at the end. 
So instead of doing the long division, when I convert to a decimal, all I'm gonna do is move the, since I'm dividing by 100 every time, I'm gonna move the decimal two spots to the left. That will always be the decimal equivalent of that. And then to convert to a fraction, I'm gonna do the same thing I've, I've done here. So I just wanted to point that out to you because it's gonna be much, much easier for you to um, just move the decimal instead of actually doing the long division because we're always dividing by 100. So we're always gonna move the decimal two spots to the left. So let's see what this actually means. What we're saying is that we were talking about a 50%, right? Notice that we said it was equivalent to one half. We said one half. So this is half of a pizza, and this is another half of a pizza. Together they make a whole pizza, right? We're saying that one half is exactly the same as 50%, and lo and behold, if you flip these guys over, half of this pizza is exactly equal to 50%. The other 50% would make the other half of the pizza. So as before, in fractions, you think of part over whole. In percentages, you're thinking of part over 100, kind of. So we know that if you take 100 divided by two, you get 50. So this half has to be 50%, and this half has to be 50%, just as we've been talking about uh, a minute ago. Different ways to think about it. Now the first problem always takes the longest. The remaining problems are gonna be much, much faster. Well, let's represent the percentage 25%. We wanna express it as a fraction, and we also wanna express it as a decimal. How do we express it as a fraction? Well, the percentage means 25, that's what it is, and this means per 100, so we're just gonna divide by 100. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna simplify this fraction, 25 over 100, we can divide top and bottom by what? We can divide top and bottom by 25, right? So what do we get? 25 divided by 25 is one, and 100 divided by 25 is four. So we're saying that the percentage, 25%, is the same thing as one-fourth. That's what we're saying. Right? Now let's also convert it to a decimal. When we're doing uh, 25 divided by 100, it's gonna be faster for us to write the 25 down. The decimal point is always at the end, and since we're dividing by 100, we move it two spots to the left, and so the answer here is gonna be 0 0.25 as a decimal. So what we're saying is that the fraction, 25%, can also be written as a decimal, 0.25, and it can also be written as a fraction one-fourth. These are all three the same thing. So let's go and take a look and see if we can understand that. So we basically said one-fourth is the answer to this. So if we build a pizza out of fourths, here we have one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths, four-fourths, right? What we're saying is that this one-fourth is really equivalent to 25%. This other one-fourth is equivalent to another 25%. This other one-fourth is equivalent to another 25%, and then this final one-fourth is also equivalent to another 25%. Of course, if you add all the percentages up, you should, and you get a whole, you should end up at 100%, and that's what we get. So this fourth over here is worth 25% uh, here, which is what we basically are showing you, that one-fourth of a pizza is the same as 25%, and then as a decimal, it's just 0.25. And the reason why we have a decimal equivalent here is because when we're going to multiply by a percentage, we always, almost always, convert to a decimal before doing the multiplication. We'll do problems like that a little bit later. But for now, just to know that 25% is the same as 0.25, notice the numbers are the same, the decimal just moves, which is the same as 1 fourth, all right? Now let's move along to problem three. Let's say that we have the percentage 75%. Right? How do we convert it to a fraction into a decimal? Well, 75% means 75 out of 100. That's what it means. And I can simplify this. 75 out of 100, I can simplify it by dividing the top by 25 and divide the bottom by 25. What do I actually get? 75 divided by 25 if you think 25 and then plus another 25 is 50 and another 25 is 75, the answer here is three. And then 20, 100 divided by 25 is four. So the, fra the fraction equivalent is three fourths for 75%. So we're saying that 75% is the same as three fourths. And then what would be the decimal equivalent? Well, if there's an invisible decimal point at the end, then to find the percentage, we just move it two spots to the left, which is 0 0.75. You can think of it with the 75 and you have a spot right there and you move it two spots to the left because we're dividing by 100 
and so you get 0 0.75. So these are all three the same. Let's see if it makes sense. We're saying that it's equal to 3 fourths. Here's 1 fourth, here's 2 fourths, here's 3 fourths. And 1 fourth, we already know from above, is equal to 25%, so there's 25%. And then this next fourth is another 25%, and this final fourth is another 25%, and altogether they make 75%. So 75% is 3 fourths because 25% is 1 fourth, and so if you have 3 fourths, then 25 times 3 is 75. And then the decimal equivalent of this percentage is 0.75. These are all three the same exact thing. All right. Now we're not going to use any more magnets. We're just going to crank through the remaining problems. Let's convert 11%. Let's convert it to a decimal, right? 11. There's an invisible decimal at the end. We're going to be dividing by 100, right? So we move the decimal two spots to the left, which means 0 0.11. This is the decimal equivalent of 11%. All right, how do we convert it into a fraction? We're going to write it as 11 as it compares to 100, right? 11 as it compares to 100. Now, I can't actually simplify this anymore, so I really am just done. It's just equal to 11 over 100. And you can see why the decimal is moving two spots to the left, because when I divide by 100, I'm going to move that decimal two times. All right, next problem. What about 14%? What about 14%? How do I convert that to a fraction? It's going to be 14 over 100. These are both even numbers, so I can divide top and bottom by at least 2. And what do I get? 14 divided by 2 is 7. 100 divided by 2 is 50. I get 7 fiftieths. This is the fractional equivalent of 14%. The numbers look totally different, but 14 as it compares to 100 is the same fraction as 7 uh, or when you simplify, it, is the same as 7 50 So these are equivalent. How do I convert this into a decimal? Well, if I'm dividing by 100, uh, then I'm going to move that decimal two spots to the left, which means it's going to be 0 0.14. So instead of doing the actual division, I just know I'm moving two spots to the left. So 0 0.14, same as this, and this fraction is the same as this. Notice that 11% and 14% are very small percentages close to zero. So the decimal is also very close to zero, and the fractions are also pretty small. 11 out of 100 or 7 out of 50, those are pretty small fractions because the percentages are small in those cases. All right, we're on the home stretch. Let's take a look at 9%. How do I convert that to a uh, fraction? Well, it's going to be 9 out of 100. Can I simplify this? Well, actually, I can't. I cannot divide top and bottom and make it simpler, so this fraction is the same as 9%. How do I convert it into a decimal? Well, I'm going to take a 9, which is a decimal point here, and I have to move it two spots to the left. So I kind of have to insert a 0, making it 0 0.09. This is the decimal. Because if I started here and moved it two spots to the left, I have to insert that 0. So 0 0.09 is the decimal equivalent, and this is the fraction equivalent. All right, only a couple more. Let's take a look at 45%. How do I convert it to a fraction? 45 divided by 100, or out of 100. So I'm going to simplify that as 45 out of 100. And in order to simplify that fraction, I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 5. They're both divisible by 5. And so 45 divided by 5 is 9, and 100 divided by 5 is, what, 20. So the fractional equivalent to this percentage is 9 twentieths. What's going to be the decimal equivalent? By now you can see that there's a decimal here and you're dividing by 100. All you're doing is moving it two spots to the left. So it's 0 0.45. This is the decimal equivalent of that percentage. And here is the fractional equivalent. All right. I think only one more. Maybe there's two more. Let's take a look at 20%. How do I convert that to a fraction? 20 over 100. And I can simplify this one. 20 over 100. I'm going to simplify it by dividing. I know I can divide by 5, but I can also actually divide by 20. And so 20 divided by 20 is 1, and 100 divided by 20 is 5. So the fraction 1 fifth is the same as 20%. How do I get the decimal? There's going to be an invisible decimal here, and I'm moving it two spots. One, 
two. So zero point two, or you can write it as zero point two zero. The trailing zero doesn't really do anything. And so you can leave it like this. So point two zero or one fifth, same thing. All right, let me do our last problem. I'll squeeze it in kind of over here. Last problem, 82%. How do I write it as a decimal? Write it as 82 over 100. And I can simplify this because I can know I can at least be divisible by two, right? So I'm gonna to divide top and bottom by two to simplify it. 82 divided by two, when you work through that, is 41. You divide by two, divide by two. You're gonna get 41 and 100 divided by two is 50. So 41 fiftieths is the fractional equivalent of this. And the decimal is if I just know that there's an invisible decimal here and move it two spots to the left, 0 0.82 is the decimal equivalent. So here we have conquered what a percentage is. And we basically established that the percentage scale goes all the way from the low end of 0% all the way to the maximum of 100%, because it's a scale out of 100. Right in the middle is 50%. That's when you give me half of something, or there's a half of a chance of something happening right in the middle. And then for every one of these percentages, we can represent it two other ways. We can move the decimal two spots to get a decimal equivalent for every one of these percentages, and we can also convert to fractions uh, for every one of these as well, and we've shown how to do that. So every percentage can be represented as a fraction, and also represented as a decimal. And we will use both of those representations as we go on and solve problems in the future. So for now, I'd like you to solve all of these, make sure you're with me, and then follow me on and we'll, we'll continue building your skills in the next lesson, step by step. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.